a lot of people have been messaging me about doing a run through of my Grizzly Tracker. Let's go take a look at it. Before we completely go through the boat, here's the stats on the Grizzly Tracker 1860. All right, let's start up front. She comes with a, a roller wheel and a crank. Nice lighting system, safety, safety hitch. Comes with a safety for the boat, which is kind of cool. And then a, a nice winch and a roller. That's all factory. The trailer's factory comes with this trailer. I'm not certain if it's galvanized or whatever. You might want to comment below and let me know. But it does have some sort of a black coating on it. That seems to be protecting it pretty well. We'll see how long she lasts. I project it'll last a few years at least. One of my best assets for getting in the boat. <laughs> all right, something else she came with was this light here. So this is your rear running light. It snaps into place here. And when you're running, you just plug it in back here in that corner. Boom, stick it in there, twist it, it locks into place. It also comes with a, a red and green running light that goes in here. Now it didn't come with this. This is a Minn Kota to Rover trolling motor. I think it's a 55. Yes, it is. And this guy has a remote control that we'll get to later, but I can operate it from anywhere in the boat via the remote control. We had to wire it in here. That just kind of stays as is, it doesn't move. Two bolt cleats up front, two bolt cleats in the back. That came factory installed. It also came with this rail system that you can mount rod holders to. Uh, you put them in here and it's kind of like a track system on a kayak. A lot of accessories go on these rails all the way around. It did not come with this Yeti, obviously. So what I did was I installed some Yeti tie downs. So stainless steel screws go in the deck and you're able to strap your cooler down. That's how we're able to stay on this cooler without it going anywhere. The cooler moves the boat. Another cleat for tying off at the ramp. That brings me to this front hatch. Just a twist, turn and lift. Throwable cushion, that's Coast Guard regulated. You gotta do that. And if you're a guide, you have to have type one flotation. So I've got four type ones. That's the real thick offshore ones that stay. So totally in compliance, plenty of rope. This is a little emergency bag. Somebody forgets a hat, sunglasses, whatever that stays in there. Some, you know, some medicine and stuff in case you get in a bind. Here is that front running light as we talked about. And this is my troll motor battery. The boat comes with the tray and the mount and the strap. I put a, just a standard lead, lead battery, 90 bucks at Walmart, Marine RV, and it will run that 55 Tarova all day. You know, you, you're not constantly trolling here. We do a lot of drifting. We troll correct drifts and stuff like that. It'll do it all day long, easy with one battery. I like to keep the boat as light as possible. That's why I don't have two batteries. The seat's killer. I can actually have two folks. It's so big, you can have one guy sit here, husband and wife, one guy sit like that. Very comfy. And it's in the perfect position as far as how the boat rides on plane. This is a C-deck type ruler. It's in a great spot. We can lay it down here. There's a drain here. So when I'm scrubbing, it goes right out. Love this ruler. Now the seat flips up and there's a live well in here. This thing will spray water if you hit a button on the console and will keep fish and, and bait alive. I'm artificial and fly and whatnot, so I don't use it for a live well very often. I have been known to throw ice in here and use it for a cooler, but it's not a very good dry box because it always stays damp from, from uh, washing the boat down. You know, there's always a little bit of water in here, so I don't use it for a dry box, but I do use it for a cooler on occasion and for anything I can throw in there that can get wet. Very comfy seat once again. All right, so that brings me to the center console. The center console came with a windshield and a bar. You'll see them in the ads. But I couldn't get it through my garage door. So my buddy Captain Chris and I took it off. Uh, so now I can, I can pass through the garage door. It would have been in the way anyway. I don't really use a windshield or a grab bar. Which brings me to the console. I put some ram mount stuff. I, from all my kayaking days, I have tons of ram mount gear. This holds my cell phone. It's got, it came with a cup holder, which I keep Procure and scissors. Those are always in that position. And on this side, I have a pair of pliers. And on this side, I have a pair of pliers. So 
no matter where I'm at in the boat, I can help folks grab a pair of pliers really quickly. It does have this side tray that drains, so lures that have been used that need to be cleaned, salt cleaned off, I tend to throw in here. All right, the center console, guys. You've got a navigation light on and off. That'll kick, kick the lights on if they're plugged in. Aerator for the live well if you're using it, and navigation lights on and off. That's pretty much it's all on the console, except for start and stop. KVD Sexy Dog keeping it afloat, right? RPMs, handy for the braking because I was able to keep it at 4,000 for first 20 hours. So that brings me down to under the console. This is kind of my work position when I'm guiding. So I have a Yeti bucket. Yeah, people make fun of these expensive buckets, but I absolutely love them. And I have the expensive lid that goes on. Why? Because this is something I use a lot. And here are all my soft plastics. And there anything that I would need to get to quickly while I'm guiding, like my remote for the Minn Kota, first aid, sunglasses, leader material. This is all easy access. And what's cool about this console is that it wedge is in here perfect and it's in between my legs and it's out of the way under the console the only thing i really keep under here besides a few tools this angle cooler and in this angle cooler all my hard baits and hooks this h box here this is nothing but hooks nothing but worm hooks and jig heads you name it if it's a hook that i use it's in here i keep all these in a cooler because when i spray down water doesn't get in these if they're in the cooler my W box, which is my windy day box, which is heavier plugs. Top water one box, which is just top waters that I use most often. I rig all my rods before we leave with the lures that we're going to be using for the day most often. This is backup once I get in the boat because we're ready to rock when we start in the morning. Oh, I almost forgot one of the most important items on the console is the by law you have to have this on this kill switch i guess y'all probably saw the video i did where the fella fell out of his boat and we had to rescue him this is what prevents that from happening it's mandatory only thing i did was add a larger hiking clip on here so i can clip it to my pants a little easier just when you run and clip it on it's a whole lot safer if you get thrown to the ground that's a critical item if you're running a boat and you have a nice steering console and then you have cigarette lighter style charging port rod holder so it's got a rod holder set on each side right but the way it way it works is you're supposed to do it the whole to seven foot rod like this and one down there but i always found this awkward to use it like you're supposed to so what i do is i put all i put up to four rods in that first holder right there and then i set them on the back deck like this and that seems to support them better and then i strap them in like this when I'm running, you get this kind of a thing going on. And I'll do up to four rods on each side like that, no problem. So rods are always horizontal unless we're running from spot to spot. And then we'll put them in these rod holders while we're running so we can grab them and keep fishing. And when we're fishing, they're definitely down low like that. So there's nothing to hit when you rear back to make a cast. Moving right along to the back here, I have another Yeti 45 that I use for storage and as a casting platform. They work really well as casting platforms because they are stout. Spring, winter, spring, fall, I keep a lot of stuff in here that's cold weather oriented. A couple of pair of frog togs in case somebody gets cold or wet or it starts drizzling. This is all my licensing for being a professional guide, a captain. And this is the 46 inch drift sock. Once this comes out of here, it stays out of here until it's cleaned off again. It's been cold, some, some of those little heat pads. And this is a backup red and green light if something were to happen and my lights were to go out. And this is a bunch of headlamps for the same reason. If we were to get in a bind where the lights didn't work, we could, uh, we could light this boat up if we had to, just for say, extra safety. And then all this goes in here until summer hits and then use it, that stuff usually comes out. Bringing us to the rear of the boat. There's not much back here, guys. Just the water pumps and the bilge and the... The plug, that's where you put the plug in. I put it on the inside instead of the outside so nothing will whack it. I love these sponsors. Can you stand on them? The answer is yes. They're welded to the boat, no problem. They add a lot of buoyancy on the back end to pick up the weight of that motor. So the boat really floats level, which enables us to go super skinny, which is the reason I love aluminum because it's light and this boat runs super skinny. We got up on a sand flat in two inches of water. We all got out of it and we just slid it right off. We're just barely wet ground. Super light for, for a 19 foot two inch boat, which is another reason I went with the Merc 60 instead of the 90. This came with the 90 option. 
but the 90 added a whole lot more weight and I wanted to keep her light. I'm not a speed demon. I want to get where we're going and I want to be light when I get there. Float higher, go skinnier. I did add the power lift jack plate to raise the motor up a little bit. It helps when we're running skinny in a couple feet of water. Another thing you might've saw Chris and I add was the push pole. I've got to have a push pole that's at least the length of the boat, if not a little bit longer. I do a lot of push poling. Like the other day, we started seeing tails in the back of a pond. Oh, here goes one. Looks, oh. Oh. <laughs> he gone, he gone, we blew him out. The motor had to come up and it was only about this deep. I can get the push pole. The troll motor won't run with that much water. With the push pole, we can go in four or five inches easy and I can just ease him back there and we can get a shot on those tailing fish where normally we just look at them and wave and we couldn't get to them. The pole allows that, the light boat allows that. So I think this is a 20 foot, half carbon fiber, half fiberglass, stiffy push pole. Which I dearly love. And then I have a video where Chris and I added these Amazon plates that go in the gear track. Now that is something I use the gear track for. Three of them and it bows. And you just snap it right into place on the water and it just locks into place like that with the pressure. Hey, thanks a lot for watching the walkthrough of my Grizzly Tracker. If you'd like to go fishing with me in the Grizz, do a bunch of sight casting and chasing some big fish, give me a shout. All the information's at 30milesout.com. What? Let's go fishing.